Hello there everyone, my name's Cole and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at a project that I just finished completing over the course of three weeks. This is by far the largest project that I've ever taken on um, and the most complex. It's also the one that I'm the most proud of. So without much further ado, I present to you the Blackbird. This is a single person short range combat vessel. It's equipped with two forward facing laser cannons and can be deployed... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, as you can probably tell from the title of the video and the thumbnail, we're actually going to look at something much larger. This is a carrier-class ship. It's modeled after the Prometheus from Stargate, the X-303. Uh, it has two hangar bays with four of those Blackbirds each. It also has uh, six omnidirectional laser cannons that are controlled individually from the bridge. And also it has uh, two missile silos. Uh, we'll go and look at all that stuff in just a second. But as I mentioned, this ship is absolutely massive. It's uh, 185 blocks long. 48 blocks wide and 42 blocks tall. In real world terms, it's 607 feet by 485 feet by 137 feet. Uh, the ship is mostly automated. There's a lot of special effects that I built right into it, um, automatic doors and force fields and such. Um, and I achieved those effects uh, using 820 command blocks. Uh, this ship has a crew complement of uh, at least 40 people. There's 40 individual dorms, um, and that includes the, uh, the combat personnel. So we'll go inside and we'll have a look. What we'll do is we'll go through and I'll show you each room um, inside the ship, and then I'll show you some of the redstone and command blocks that are that are behind it. So immediately we come in, we come into the teleportation room. Um, this is the basic room. There's yellow lines on the floor uh, telling people where they can and cannot go. This is the uh, control station for the uh, um, for the teleportation um, area, um, and then over here is the uh, security personnel. So we've got the lockers for, for the weaponry, um, a little desk where they can sign in and out, um, and what have you. I had this really close to the teleportation room, um, just because in case there was any intruders who beamed, up and beamed in on board, um, I wanted them to be ready to take on the crew. Or not the crew, I wanted the crew to be ready to take on whatever threat that there was. So along the outside of the ship in this part... Um, there are all the dorm rooms. All the dorm rooms currently are identical. Um, when the ship would be deployed, the, the dorm rooms would have different furnishings and, and such. But as of right now, they are all identical. And the same is true over here on the other side. So uh, the dorm rooms here, they go all the way up this part of the ship and all the way up the other side as well. Uh, in the center part of the ship are the different rooms. So we came in here through the teleportation room. Um, in this center block right here, we have the, uh, the mess hall, um, and this is just where all of the personnel and crew eat. There's a drink station here, um, and a buffet uh, station right here, um, individual tables on this side, and then group tables over here on this side. And with the mess hall, uh, this ship is not one that has uh, replicators where they can just make um, and teleport uh or sorry, materialize whatever food they want, there's actually a kitchen in here. So we have the, the food preparation area over here, ovens and stoves and, and other stuff. There's a, a workstation right here where the, uh, the kitchen staff can order, um, or not order, keep track of what supplies they have and what supplies they've used. Uh, there's dry storage over here um, and cold storage in here. So this is the top floor. We'll go down and look at the bottom floor here as well. Um, in between each of these large rooms, we have these elevators here. And uh, these elevators will teleport the person up and down. So we'll start up back over here on this side. And so whenever you press the button, uh, the doors always do the same thing. They remove, the, 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 they remove blocks so the door goes up and then down and then teleport you to the next floor. Um, so up here, that we are now on the bottom floor. Um, we got all the dorm rooms here. They're the same. Um, there's 20 dorm rooms on each floor. Uh, there's a recreation area here for the crew uh, with a TV, lots of couches, um, a gaming area, and a pool table, and the spot over there for the pool cues. And then on this floor here is where the, uh, the medical, um, medical rooms are. So up closest here, uh, on this side here, this is closest to the hangar bays. Um, which are right down here and then over on the other side as well. So closest to the hangar bays is, is the emergency room. I'll go check that out here right now. 
So in the emergency room, you have uh, all of your different emergency room beds um, with heads-up displays that can uh, show patient information, um, as well as isolation chambers in case um, something happened that a crew member needed to be isolated from, from the rest. Um, there's several doctor's workstations here and here uh, where they can check up, where they can run tests and uh, check on the, uh, the status of the, of the pilots and crew members who are sick. Um, just in case the uh, emergency room doctors aren't able to fully take care of whatever happened, uh, there is an operating room. Inside the operating room, there's the uh, full body scanner here, um, another workstation here where they can use it, uh, where, sorry, where they can run further tests, analyze tests, and then two operating chambers right here. These ones are fully isolated, um, just like the isolation chambers as well. In the front part of the ship is the uh, repair bay for the, for the Blackbirds. Um, these uh, ships would just be teleported in and out of this area. Um, and that's just right here. This one is two stories tall. It's access accessible from the top floor as well. Um, but yeah, this is just, it's a spot for, for two, where two of the Blackbirds can be repaired. Um, down here on the first floor on this far side is the office for the repair bay. Just right here, a spot for the crew members to sit down and uh, a spot for the, uh, the chief engineering officer or chief mechanical officer, I guess, um, here to, to, to log and run diagnostics on the ship. In the rear part of the ship, we have the hangar base, which we'll go to here just right now. Um, actually, before we get there, we have the ready room um, right down here. Um, this is where the uh, commanding officer of the fleet um, will explain to his, uh, his pilots um, you know, what the mission is, what the dangers are, and uh, what their objectives are, just in this room right here. Uh, back here is main engineering, which we'll go to in just a second. Um, but right here, this is the hangar bay. So as I mentioned, there are four... Oh, need to get rid of that. <laughs> uh, I was doing some uh, some work with the banners, and I left some crafting benches around. Um, but those aren't they're not features of the carrier. We'll just get rid of them. Um, so as I mentioned, there are four of these blackbirds uh, stationed inside here. Um, and these can, all four of these can be deployed. A total of eight can be deployed at any given time. And uh, you can control certain things um, from over here. So we can turn on the flight deck guide lights. And they'll guide the ships inside, in and out of the ship. And then over here, um, we also have controls for the hangar force field. Uh, this is one of my favorite effects in the entire ship. The force field uh, just comes in and comes out. We'll look in more detail a little bit later on how this works, uh, specifically with the doors. Um, but on both sides of the hangar, I have this access room over here. And uh, essentially, there's just two banks of command blocks. Um, one bank here gets rid of the glass that's there um, in a certain order. And uh, this bank here um, puts it back in when the lever is flipped up and flipped it out. Um, but essentially, the way the force field works is the, the center of blocks of glass disappear, and it works outwards on both sides. And then when it comes in, it does exactly it does the reverse. It, it fills blocks in here and then fills them all the way out. Um, by far, my most favorite effect on the ship. Um, this effect took a long time to build. It took about three hours to, to build it and put in all the commands. It was a lot of math. It was a lot of looking at the command block, writing down its coordinates, and then writing down the coordinates of... Uh, of where, it was, where, where the blocks had to be spawned in. So over here is main engineering. This is the, uh, the reactor core. There are five thrusters on this ship. It's uh, a long range, um, long mission duration um, combat vessel. It's designed to be out in the field uh, for extensive periods of time. So there's two switches here that activate. You can turn the lights on and off inside the reactor. And then the reactor itself, its power can be engaged and disengaged. Um, the way that this works here, as you know, with beacon blocks, they have to have a, a clear path um, from the beacon themselves all the way up into the sky. So the way that this works is this does two things. Um, the first, actually it only does one thing, sorry. Uh, when I turn this off, it hits a command block, which actually spawns up the, uh, the fuselage of the ship, um, which blocks these beams. And when we pull this on, it gets rid of those and exposes it to the air, and then the uh, reactor beams turn on. So we'll just turn that off here. All right, so we'll head back upstairs here now, and we'll look at the, uh, the last couple rooms before we head up to the bridge. So we'll come up through this elevator here.
Okay, so this is the, the main part of the ship here. So up here we have a conference room um, for the navigation crew and doctors and, and everybody else here on the ship. Um, it's just a, as I said, it's a conference room. It's where the, um, the commanding officers can do training, um, explain the mission, um, whatever really needs to be done. It's a general purpose room. Over here is a, a main lounge area. Um, I wasn't 100% sure really what to do with this area. Um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that there are just a, you know, a huge seating area in this part of the ship. Um, this is elevator access directly to the bridge. And over here are the, the missile rooms over on the, on the two sides. So having a seating area in a combat area didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, but I was kind of pressed with space and wasn't too, too sure what all I wanted to do with this. I may go back in the future and add in some other rooms. Um, I know I'm missing a few things. Usually with a combat, uh, with military combat vessels, there's um, mess halls and recreations rooms for the junior ranks, the senior ranks, and officers. Um, so I could potentially throw some of that in, in up here. But we'll look here at the missile, the missile area. Um, so like down in the teleportation area, there's clear lines of where you can and cannot go. Uh, it's a fully automated system. We've got a crane here that goes up and picks up the missiles, um, loads them into the silo. Um, this adds some energy to them and uh, thrusts them out into space. Um, and a couple consoles um, here and here to, uh, to, um, to work with them for the crew members to, to facilitate uh, their targets and such. Uh, the other side is exactly the same. So we'll head up here to the bridge. All right, so there's uh, several workstations here around. Um, one's for sensors, one's for navigation, security, uh, all the bells and whistles, lots of console areas around. There is no distinct captain's chair because the captain should be free floating. Um, realistically, there's, um, well, not realistically, there's, there's really two commanding officers for the ship. There's the navigation crew commanding officer and uh, then the, the commanding officer for the, uh, for the combat, for the um, or the blackbirds. Uh, over here, this is the the controls for the uh, for the um, laser cannons that are on the ship. Um, these two consoles control these three, and then the consoles on the other side control the, the three that are on the other side there. Um, any console could control all six. Uh, they can be controlled individually um, or all together. Um, it's really designed so that if something were to happen electronically or even physically to the bridge, um, th that one console could still continue to defend the ship. Um, back here is where the uh, where the targets could be assigned. Um, it basically would be a heads-up display that's much larger than these smaller ones here, um, so that whoever's working back here could give these two officers a heads-up as to, to where their targets are um, and what they need to, to attack. Um, there's a couple ready boards um, here where they can plan um, what's going on. Uh, this here would be a full navigation, a star map, um, where the captain and, and crew could look and see where they're going. Um, over here would be where a hologram would be depicted, um, or projected rather, of the battle that they're fighting, um, so they could strategize. Um, yeah, and then a coffee workstation, because you have to have coffee <laughs> to be able to function, even in space. So we're going to head outside here, and uh, I'm going to show you how the effects like these doors in the force field work. Okay, the first effect we're going to look at are the doors. Um, so the way that, I kind of hinted at a bit this a little bit earlier, but the way that this works is you have a command, it's all done with command blocks. Um, I have one set of command blocks which turn um, an area into air, then another set which fills it back in with the glass. So we'll look at the commands here. Um, essentially what happens, well, I'll, I'll just show you, I'll show what it looks like. We'll press this button. So redstone block spawns there, that goes through the commands, the glass disappears, and then reappears glass disappears and then reappears. Um, so the way that this works is uh, this block here simply despawns a redstone block down here. This one sets the, this bottom uh, row right here to air. This one sets the top row to air. This one here gets rid of the redstone block that's right here. That way you, you can as soon as you're done pressing the button it's ready to go again. Um, and this one right here sets this top row back to stained glass, and then the final one there um, sets the bottom row back to stained glass. And that's it, those are the doors. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And everything, all of the, uh, the doors work that way. Um, even the, the force fields in the, in the carriers work that way. Except the carrier, it's, it's much more command blocks um, to do it, but it is the same effect.
the, the way that the elevators work is pretty much the exact same thing, except it has to happen twice. Because uh, if you were to teleport, um, essentially, so you hit the button, oh, I have to do it down here, um, but you hit the button, um, you come in here, it teleports you up. I've disabled it here for this, but it would teleport you up. And if this didn't, if this door didn't open back up again, the player would be stuck. So two things happen each time um, the player presses the button. So one spawns a command block down here. This cycles through here. This gets rid of the uh, stained glass here and essentially opens the door. This one gets rid of the redstone block that's placed right here. Um, there's a delay. And then this one starts filling in the blocks coming down. So this one does the top row, second, third, and fourth. Um, what happens at the same time is this command block here places a redstone block right here. And then there's a 14 delayed, uh, full delayed repeater system here. And this one, when it comes to the end, it activates three command blocks. So one teleports the player, one removes the redstone that gets placed right here. And then this other one here spawns a redstone block up here. And this is what opens up the door without teleplaning the player back down. So we'll show you that here again. So redstone block comes in, and as the redstone block is there, the door is now closed. The player gets teleported. Then a redstone block spawns up here. The door opens, and the door closes. And that's the effect. So I just brought us back inside the ship here. We're currently in between floors. Um, as I mentioned, this build has 820 command blocks in it um, just to make the special effects work. Uh, every single door, every single room has command blocks which make it function. Um, this build took a long time. Um, as I mentioned before at the beginning of the video, um, I did this over about 60 hours or so. Um, over the course of three weeks. Um, that doesn't include planning. I did a lot of planning. I did uh, two hours of pen and paper um, figuring out what I wanted the ship to look like. Um, and I did a lot of work on Google, um, just researching um, you know, what rooms and such I wanted in the ship. Um, it was no small undertaking. Um, overall, I'm very happy with this build. and I think it was time well spent. Um, there are a few things that I'm not too happy with. Um, for example, this room down here, um, there needs to be something else in here. I'm not 100% sure what I want to throw in here. Um, I'll figure it out later. Um, eventually, I just wanted to get a video out here to, to show this off. Um, but overall, I'm quite happy with it. Um, I'm really happy with the special effects, and I'm really happy that I was able to throw in um, pretty much everything I wanted to on this ship. Um, the automatic doors, the teleporting um, elevators, and uh, the hangar bay. Anyway, I hope you like what you see. I'll uh, catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye now.